welcome to Monday on the Political Ranter Show. Thank you for joining me on this Monday and today let's talk about the latest things that are happening in politics including the Grendel's Hellfire, the Brexit Secretary's interview on Andrew Marr and the possibility of a two-year degree programme saving students loads of money right here on the Political Ranter Show. Our first story today is the Grendel Fire and today it was announced a public inquiry is about to start in the cause of the fire and what could be done to prevent this happening in the future. Jeremy Corbyn has accused this government of failing the residents of Grendel and to be honest I think he's probably right because what have the government done since this fire actually happened? This fire has shown the government's complete incompetence when it comes to handling such disasters such as Grenfell Tower and the government is literally failing the residents of Grenfell Tower even months after the event actually happened because we have residents that have not been rehoused and we have people that are still homeless because of this fire. We have 118 families still in emergency accommodation and the government is just not doing anything about it. Conservatives who are actually in charge of the council where this fire took place have been accused of neglecting the poor residents of the area. Basically this fire and this lack of care from the Tory government is a huge symbol of the inequality that is facing the poor and the rich in this country and something needs to be done about it. We definitely need answers and we definitely need to house all the people who were affected by this fire and we definitely need action from this government. Emily Campbell, who is the leader of the council where this event took place, has been requested to not attend the memorial service of the victims of this fire by the families of the victims. Promised that she would oversee cultural change between local officials and the politicians alike and this has completely not happened. With house building levels on the down low under this Tory government, I definitely don't see anything happening right now. Justice for general. So the next thing I want to talk to you about today is the Brexit secretary who was on the Andrew Marshall yesterday and he was talking about how if we do not get a deal from the from the EU, we will just pay no money at all. So basically he was just saying the Chancellor is completely wrong when it comes to this. One Tory is saying this, one Tory is saying that, another Tory is saying something different. The Prime Minister is the Prime Minister of an ununited government when one is saying this and one is saying that. I have never seen such an ununited government in history. No deal is no deal, the Brexit Secretary said in his interview with Andrew Marr. But when you think about it, we need a deal. We need to have a deal on trade and we need to have a deal on free movement. We need to have a deal on agreement and we need to have a deal on the borders that will suffice the United Kingdom when it comes to exiting the EU. Having no deal is just going to damage all of those prospects. We cannot leave the UK with no deal. You have to leave with a good deal. No deal shouldn't even be on the cards if you ask me. I mean yes we are going on to phase two because we have phase one of the deal being already negotiated which okay is pretty good from this government but the fact that they are even considering no deal for the other aspects that we have to negotiate is absolutely very damaging to this country and I would not suggest that at all. Next thing I want to talk to you about is the two-year degrees that have been proposed by the Minister of State for University and Science, Joe Johnson. So what he is proposing to save money and to cut costs for tuition fees for universities is he is proposing a two-year degree program which is 20% less than a three-year degree program that we have in the United Kingdom. This program will save students money and this program will save students on their living costs and this program will be definitely cheaper for the government if they don't have to keep shelling out loads of loans and while well, grants aren't available anymore. But it will definitely save the government money in the long term which is why I am intrigued by this idea I think it could work for students if they are willing to engage in such an intensive two-year program which could help their future and their education studies I would definitely be in favor of something like that however do you know what a better idea would be scrapping university tuition fees altogether I've made a whole video about this and I truly believe we can do this if we have progressive taxes and if we have taxes going to the right thing especially if we cut useless things like PFI contracts the monarchy trident you know stuff I've argued before I would definitely be intrigued by the system and I would definitely want to look into the, the, the two-year degree system as well because if the Tories are not committed to scrapping tuition fees and if they are trying to make university degrees more accessible to the working class without scrapping tuition fees I definitely think this program could be a uh, second best it might attract more mature students to the program, people who didn't want to go to university straight after school but now want to go back because it definitely will be cheaper for, 
for mature students in the long run. We need a university system that is more accessible to as many people as possible because as we've said before university education is a right and this two year degree program is set to cost students 14k which is cheaper than the 27k so I definitely think this could be a step in the right direction. This student is not a commodity to be sold to the highest bidder. I actually find it hilarious how the Tories are trying to pander to the younger generation now without actually pandering to the generation. They are trying to introduce policy that actually would would help the working class people but they're not actually going as far as Labour's manifesto is uh, is saying they would do. So what the Tories are basically saying is we care but we don't care that much. The next thing I want to talk about today is the letter that Theresa May published today on her Facebook page addressing EU citizens after the completion of phase one of the deal where she successfully negotiated the rights of EU citizens to stay and live here after we have left the EU in March 2019. Now this letter actually makes it seem like she's championing the rights of EU citizens but let's not forget this is totally not true. In her letter she's outlines her vision for EU citizens rights when it comes to leaving the EU and she said stuff like yeah we have negotiated our deal so you'll be able to live and work here after we have left healthcare will stay the same basically nothing will change when we are leaving the EU which sounds very nice but let's not forget that she did not want to guarantee the rights of EU citizens earlier because she was worried about how British citizens rights will be affected in the EU so you are not the champion of EU citizens rights when you did not guarantee the rights of EU citizens as the first part of your deal when we first voted to leave the EU. Starting from Theresa May's letter, there will be a process where EU citizens who are already living here will be able to apply for settled status in the next part of next year, so right before we leave the EU. So this is actually fantastic, but you will only be able to apply for this if you have lived in the UK for five years. EU citizens who have not lived in the UK for five years will be able to weigh out their term and then they will be able to apply for settled status when they have lived here for five years. I don't know why it took almost 18 months to come to this conclusion for something that should have been guaranteed on day one, but there you go. I also want to talk about the fact that a petition on the government's website actually got over 100,000 signatures to call for a second EU referendum. So this actually means that since it got so many signatures, if it gets over 100,000, it has to be debated in Parliament, that's the rule. So this bill actually got over 130,000 signatures. So this bill will actually be debated in Parliament. Now, I think a second EU referendum might actually be beneficial for this country. However, since Theresa May is actually in the middle of negotiations right now, I don't think now is the right time because the calls for a second referendum could be a distraction from the deal that Theresa May is trying to fight so I don't think now is the time to push for a second EU referendum however I would not be against one in the future after March 2019 if we do not like the deal that we are coming out with I have definitely called for a referendum on the final deal I definitely think that we should have a say on the final deal and if we do not like the final deal that is being negotiated we should definitely have a referendum on that deal to either accept the deal or stay in the EU but the thing is I can also see the arguments of not having a second EU referendum because the Remainers who call for a second EU referendum what if it's leave again are we just gonna call for another one you can't keep calling for a referendum if just because you didn't like the result of the last one. It's the same with Scottish independence. I have completely disagreed with Nicola Sturgeon's plans to call for a second independent referendum because you can't just call one if you didn't like the answer of the last referendum. So I'm seeing both arguments. That's why I call for a referendum on the final deal and not to stay or leave the EU. But if the demand is there and if the British people want a second EU referendum then we have to respect democracy. I'm not sure if I would vote Remain this time because of the proposed United States of Europe, I definitely did not want to be a part of that. So I think all these discussions have to be held and democracy needs to be upheld. So that is all for me today. I hope you enjoy joining me on this Monday and I'll see you guys tomorrow and have a lovely day.